Hello everyone and welcome to the library research tutorial for Nursing 422. My name is Lana Wood and I'm one of the faculty librarians who works with nursing students. I can be reached at lana.wood at csueastbay.edu. Please note that I will be away on parental leave for the spring 2019 semester as well as the summer 2019 semester. However, um, if you contact me at this email address, you can get the, the information for the temporary liaison who will be working with nursing students in my absence. So my goal for today's, uh, today's tutorial session is to introduce you to the university libraries, introduce some literature search strategies, show you some live searching, and then ultimately show where you can go to get research help following this tutorial. The library website is the primary place that you'll be interacting with the library and its resources. It is available at library.csueastbay.edu. And I'll be showing this in greater detail um, once we get to the live searching. Uh, but the majority of the important information um, you will find on the home page, including um, uh, accessing the various databases that we look at, looking at interlibrary loan, and other sources like that. But first I wanted to talk through a few different search strategies that you can use um, to refine your research question and get more relevant results. So there's three that I'll briefly mention. There's WWH, which stands for who, what, and how. This is the one that I'll be showing in greater detail on the next slide. and. It can be particularly helpful for community health questions. Another that your instructor may show you is PICO, sometimes with the optional T, which is an acronym that stands for Patient Population, Intervention, Comparison, Outcome, and Sometimes Time. This tends to be a really good strategy to use for quantitative questions as well as evidence-based medicine um, and clinical queries. The last one that you can consider is called SPIDER, and it's a play on the PICO framework, but is uh, situated particularly well for qualitative questions, where the S stands for sample, the P stands for phenomenon of interest, as well as the I, the D stands for design, the E for evaluation, and the R for research type. Uh, you can definitely find more information about PICO and SPIDER um, online, and for this Next portion, we'll be looking at the first search strategy of who, what, how. So here we're going to use this tool to go from a question to pulling out the most important elements that we would need to have present in the results to be able to answer this question. So on the left, we have our question of has health education been effective in reducing teenage prescription drug abuse? So using who, we can pull out which demographic group we're looking at, which here is teenagers. The what is the prescription drug abuse, and the how, or otherwise known as the intervention here, will be the health education. So we will know now that in order to answer our question, we need to find results that talk about teenagers specifically, prescription drug abuse, and an intervention of health education. We may also want to think about what type of literature we would want to include in um, our results. So what we have here is called the evidence pyramid. And uh, the idea is that as you move up the pyramid from the bottom to the top, that the quality of the evidence increases and the number of studies that match um, these different category decreases. So on the bottom, and it's not a perfect guideline, but it can be helpful for understanding the different types of um, information that you'll come across. So on the bottom, we have things like background information, expert opinion, non-evidence-based medicine guidelines, um, and perhaps things that could form the basis of a research study that would be done, observation, stuff like that. And then we move up to the individual type of studies that could be taken out. So these include things like individual case reports, case studies, case series, 
and cohort studies where you're following a group of patients or students or some other demographic group over a period of time to see how individuals within that cohort um, change over time. We also have things like randomized controlled trials or non-randomized controlled trials and from this green color down these all represent an individual study which is not to say that it's just done on one person but rather that it's a singular study that's done looking at a particular topic. As we move up to the top three categories, we have at the top meta-analyses, systematic reviews, and evidence-based practice guidelines, as well as critically appraised literature. So what these are is that the study itself is looking at a particular topic and then finding all available um, resources that match this topic, um, studies that have been done and they're actually comp compiling the information from those individual studies to be able to make a much larger claim about a particular topic. So um, let's say for instance that we're looking at the efficacy of using herbal medicine um, to treat a particular condition. So what the researchers are actually doing in this case is they are setting up queries that are looking through published studies, perhaps unpublished work that's been presented at conferences or other what we would call gray literature on that particular topic. And let's say they found 70 studies on the topic. So then they're able to um, compile all of the results from those studies and be able to make a broader claim about the effectiveness of that herbal medicine uh, for an example. These meta-analyses and systematic reviews tend to be used a lot in evidence-based medicine because they do cover much more ground than having to read a number of these individual studies. Um, and they can be helpful for you in your research, but note that you won't have the level of detail that you find in the singular individual studies. Um, however, they can be a helpful place to look for those individual studies. So if you found one on your topic, you would be able to look through um, that article or that bibliography to find individual studies to um, retrieve from the library to get the greater detail that you find in those. Okay, so hopefully these look familiar to you. These are the three Boolean operators, which are essentially um, connecting tools that you can use to make a more precise uh, search. So we have AND, OR, and NOT. AND is probably the most frequently used one and what this does is combines multiple search terms to narrow your search and thus decrease your search results to have it be more specific. So if we look at these, this Venn diagram with these two circles, on the left, we have all of the literature that represents um, the search diet. And on the right, we have all of the literature that uses the term exercise. If we are to search for diet and exercise, we're only pulling back the shaded gray area in the middle, which um, includes both of those terms. By contrast, you can use the Boolean operator OR as a way to broaden or increase your search results and it's particularly useful if there's multiple ways of describing the same demographic group or condition, uh, multiple ways of spelling a particular um, condition or word. Uh, so here we have all of the literature on the left that uses the terminology African American. On the right we have all of the literature that uses the terminology black. So by searching for African American or black, we're able to get at the demographic group of interest, regardless of what the authors, which terms the author used in um, the article. Finally, not is, is less frequently used, but can be really powerful if you're getting a bunch of unrelated results in your search. So it's a way of also narrowing and decreasing your search results. Um, but what it's doing is excluding a particular term from, uh, from a, a grouping. So 
if on the left we have all of the literature about public health, but we are not interested in having anything that has to do with smoking, then we can put in public health not smoking, and we've eliminated that white circle that is about smoking as well as the overlap that it has with public health. So if we go back to our who, what, how question, where our search terms are teenagers, prescription drug abuse, and health education, the Boolean operators that we can consider using for these different terms, first of all, to connect these three different concepts that we want to include, we could use the Boolean operator and between each of them. So teenagers and prescription drug abuse and health education. Uh, we could also use the OR term to try to get at um, similar terms that could be used for these concepts. So teenagers or adolescents, um, prescription drug abuse or a particular type of drug abuse, opioid drug abuse, um, so on, health education, there could be synonyms for that as well. So that's how we put um, the Boolean operators together with our keywords that we've searched. Finally, another thing that you can consider for more precise search results is the difference between keyword searching versus subject searching. So on the left I have the keywords that we've pulled out for um, our particular concepts of interest, so teenager, prescription drug abuse, health education. And then what you see on the right are what is considered or what is called a controlled vocabulary for those particular terms. So here uh, what that means is so for PubMed the National Library of Medicine essentially creates um, an index so that all different terms that could relate to adolescents um, get mapped to the term of adolescent. But what can be particularly helpful about searching by these subject headings rather than by keywords is that when applied to the articles it means that it makes up a major component of that study. So if we were to just search by the keyword teenager then it can, the database could do a full text search and teenager could turn up on um, page 14 as a footnote, but that article, though it doesn't have anything to do with teenagers, would still show up in our search results, whereas if we were to search by subject heading and the term adolescent, then that means that it's a major component of that study, so that article that just has it as a footnote would not ret be returned in our results. So it's another way that you can get more precise in your searching, but it does require some navigation to figure out what each database um, uses for that subject heading. So as you can see there's a difference between Academic Search Complete and PubMed for what these different terms have. In some cases health education remains consistent across all all three um, but the other two do use different terms for the subject headings. So I keep mentioning these different databases and uh, what is meant by a database generally is it is a collection of different resources um, on either particular topics or if it's scoped as a subject specific database or as a general um, general scoped database such as Academic Search Complete or Google Scholar. And what's nice about you know Academic Search Complete is a database that contains articles, books, videos, conference proceedings, other types of information like that. And it's scoped for a general education um, undergraduate gra through graduate school. So it can be a really nice place to look if you have a more interdisciplinary topic where you would want results to come in from the social sciences, from the humanities, um, in addition to health sciences. By contrast, a subject specific database like CINAHL, um, which is specific to nursing and allied health, is already curated so that the journals and books and videos that are collected for it have that focus of nursing and allied health. So it's starting from a smaller but more specific pool that can help you um, more quickly find the literature that's available on your topic. 
And when you get into these more specialized databases like CINAHL, um, it, you have advanced search filtering that you're not going to find in other databases. So for if, instance, if one of the requirements of your assignment is that you find research that's authored by a nurse, CINAHL is the only database that gives you um, the filtering option to say either the first author is a nurse, which would mean the primary person responsible for the study is a nurse, or any author is a nurse. So you begin to see these more advanced search tools available to you when you have these subject-specific databases. But let's go ahead and take a look now at the library website um, to learn more about uh, the resources that are available to you in it. Okay, so here we have the library homepage, which is available to you at library.csueastbay.edu. And on this homepage, you can find a lot of information. We have up here the library hours, which will change depending on which um, term we are in. So right now that I'm recording this, it is during intercession, so there are fewer hours available. But you can see for our spring semester that the hours of the library building is available are listed here. Um, the co learning commons after hours, which go until 2 a.m. are available here. Um, the reference desk, which I'll be talking about as we move along for um, drop-in research and reference help, as well as services like the Student Center for Academic Achievement. We also have um, FAQs, which you um, can help you with different questions you may have, um, a link to go to the different databases that are available to you as a student at Cal State East Bay, along with the Interlibrary Loan Service, which I'll talk about, and specific journal searching. And you'll also notice that here in the middle of the screen is this one search screen. So what this is, is this is a product that we have that simultaneously searches all of the different databases along with our library catalog, which would include books and other videos, simultaneously. So it may sound like a really good place to start your research, but it's similar to typing in cancer into Google where you're going to get millions of results. So it can be a really overwhelming place to start your research. I will show you one good use for it, which is when you are looking for a particular full text based on a citation, or if you have a rather obscure topic and you're unable to find uh, materials by going to the individual databases themselves. Um, if you know that you're looking for a particular book, you can click on this Books tab to find um, either a print or ebook version of it. And then we also have these subject guides. So this can be a really nice place to start your research by going down to the nursing guide that I put together. So you can click on nursing and then click on go. And what this is, is it's a page that I put together that has information on places to get started for your research, finding articles, so particular databases that we have that can be helpful for you. Um, ways of finding books, videos, drug information, nursing websites, information on APA citations, as well as particular course guides that I've put together for nursing and um, perhaps some relevant health science classes. So this is a nice way for you to get into the databases, but let's go ahead and take a look at this databases A to Z tab available in the quick links box to the left. So this lists out um, 179 databases that are available to you as a student. Um, you can access them from on campus or off campus by signing in with your NetID and password. And uh, if you're looking for um, some good places to start your research, you could try something like Academic Search Complete. We have a link to PubMed as well as Google Scholar through here, which will connect you back to the resources available through Cal State East Bay um, so that you have greater access to full text. But let's take a look at the database that I was talking about earlier, CINAHL, which stands for Current Index to Nursing and Allied Health Literature. So when we click on this, 
I'm on campus, so I didn't have to sign in with my NetID and password, but if I were off campus, I would just see one more screen before I got here, which would ask for my NetID and password. Uh, so right away we can see that the database is prompting us to have a more sophisticated search by um, having these different search boxes separated by the Boolean terms and. Below we also have a number of different ways that we can limit our results. So here um, you never want to click on this full text link for any of the databases and that's because we have a service that looks for the full text in other databases if it's not available in the one that you're in. But perhaps your professor mentioned that you can only use peer-reviewed articles. So you could click on this box here which limits it to peer-reviewed journals. The article itself may not be peer-reviewed, but if it's a research study in a peer-reviewed journal it should be. However, if it were like an editorial, um, that's something that typically does not go through peer review. If there are particular dates like in the last 10 years for a parameter that you've been given, then you can enter in um, 2009 to 2019 here, um, as well as choose, you know, particular demographic information, age groups, geography, um, pregnancy status, um, and other stuff like that. And um, I mentioned before that CINAHL is the only database that has this search for first author as a nurse or any author as a nurse. So let's go back to here and say we want to look at teenagers or adolescents or a teenager prescription drug abuse and then Let's just leave it at that before we look at the intervention as well. So we run our search looking at just this one database. And we haven't limited it yet to scholarly or peer-reviewed journal articles. And so we have 43 results that match this term. Um, let's say that we want to limit it to just peer-reviewed journals. So we'll go from 43 down to 34. and what we're looking at now are the different resources that are peer-reviewed that match our search terms. So let's take a look at this second result here. If we click on this, we have a lot of information including those subject headings that I was talking about. So these are the mapped subject headings for this particular article. We could click on these to run a new search. Um, let's say we wanted to look for this Prescription drugs in adolescence sounds like a good one. Um, substance abuse in adolescence could be promising as well. We have the information on the abstract. Um, and to get to the full text in this case, we see that PDF icon here on the left. If we click on this, we will get the full text to this article, which we can download, email to ourselves, um, uh, get the permalink for or other information like that for this full text. A nice thing about most of the databases now that we have access to is that they all feature some sort of citation tool. So over here on the right we have this piece of paper with writing on it that says cite. If we click on this we can scroll down to APA and though it's not perfect it's a much easier starting place to write your citation um, than having to write it out from scratch. So you could copy and paste this into your Google Doc or your Word Doc and check it against the APA publication manual just to make sure that the capitalization and um, the uh, period placement and stuff like that is correct um, and use that in your paper for your APA citation. So let's go back to our results list though. So the reason why I say that you never want to click on full text is because you have to remember that we are just looking at one database which covers a very small sliver of all of the available literature to you through the Cal State East Bay Library. So if the full text is not in this particular database, then you will see this button here that says find it, which is going to open up a new tab and look across our other databases to find the full text in one of them. 
So here it's directing us to the database Science Direct, which is another really good database to use for your searching. And if the link resolver is working correctly, then it should take us straight to um, the uh, journal article that we wanted, which it did in this case, where we could download the PDF, um, export the citation to it, and uh, read other information about this here in ScienceDirect. If we didn't have the full text available in one of the databases, let's see if we can find one that we don't have the full text to, uh, then your option would be to request the article through interlibrary loan. Great. So interlibrary loan is a free service that's available to you as a student at Cal State East Bay. Part of what your tuition and fees pays for are these different databases as well as um, interlibrary loan where if we don't have the article available for you in a database then you can request it for free and it will be emailed to you at your Horizon email address within one to three business days. So when we click on this link here uh, it'll ask you to sign in with your NetID and password and you just have to register for it one time and then once you click on this link it'll auto populate the citation information that's needed to request this article for you from another library and the PDF will be emailed to you and then once you have that you can download it to your computer and have it indefinitely um, or retrieve it from the uh, link that you'll receive at your Horizon email address um, I believe it stays in there for up to 30 days So going back to this library homepage and looking at the databases A to Z, um, Google Scholar and PubMed are both freely available databases, um, but the benefit of going through the university libraries to access Google Scholar or PubMed is that um, you're telling those databases that you are affiliated with Cal State East Bay, so you will continue to see that Find It link appear when full text is not available already through Google Scholar or PubMed. So let's go ahead and look at PubMed. So you can just bookmark this um, this link which has what we call a proxy which is um, what is telling PubMed that you're coming from Cal State East Bay Library. So we'll go to this interface here. PubMed is a really great resource but can be more complicated to use. If we go to this advanced search screen and then we can run our search here. Okay, let's go ahead and run our search. So we have a lot of results. We would want to limit it um, probably by adding in more terms here, uh, perhaps considering adding in other limiters like if there's a particular date range that you're interested in um, and so on. But um, what we can see by looking at these results, and let's go ahead and sort these by best match. So let's click on this first article which is from 2017 and because we started at Cal State East Bay, we see this Find It link, which is going to bring us back into the library and look for full text in one of the databases. In this case, it's not available, so you would need to request the article from Interlibrary Loan. But again, that's a free service, whereas um, the other option it gives you is what we call a paywall, which is where um, it's going to ask you to pay a certain amount of money to be able to access. Although, let's see. Huh, well strangely we actually were able to get to the full text, I believe, for this article. But typically if Cal State East Bay does not have access to it, then you would see a screen that we call a paywall that may ask you to pay between twenty and fifty dollars just to access this article one time. Um, definitely never pay those fees while you're a student at Cal State East Bay because if we don't have it, we'll get it for you for free. Um, and it'll just be emailed to you through interlibrary loan. 
Okay. So let's say, for instance, I mentioned that there is the one search screen available on the home page and how it's not a good place to start your research, but it is a good place to, um, if you have citations that you're interested in. So let's, let's do a search in one more database, ScienceDirect. I'm going to use parentheses here to group my terms together since it's not giving me multiple concept box. And here I'm using or to have the different terminology for those concepts and and in between them to connect the different um, concepts that I want here. Okay, so we have this article here. We could, of course, go to the PDF or ScienceDirect makes it pretty easy to just read it in screen. Um, and what I do like about this is they hyperlink their citations. So in this first portion, this is essentially a literature review on this topic. And if you think about it, if you're a researcher who focuses on prescription drug misuse in adolescence, you're probably going to be someone who knows the other people who are writing on this topic. So you'll be pointing the reader to these other studies in the article in the literature review section. So this can be a great way to find related articles to your topic is by organically going through the articles that match your topic already to see who they are citing. ScienceDirect makes it really easy to do because they hyperlink these different footnotes. And if the full text is available, it will show up here as a PDF link. That just means if it's available in ScienceDirect, not if it's available to us overall, however. So let's go ahead and see. There's one of interest, so for example, here's one that is available in ScienceDirect. But let's say that weren't there. So what we'd want to do is copy and paste at least the article title, if not also um, the author information. And we can go back to the library homepage to this one search screen and plug it in and search. And it should be the first result that returns from our one search screen, which it is here. So if we click on this, we can see that we can get the full text to this article. Here, just science direct. If it were available in other databases, um, they would be listed here with a hyperlink. And we can click on this to go from the previous article's bibliography to another related um, full text study looking at this particular topic. So that's a really nice use of um, that one search screen um, to find what it is that you're looking for. Okay, so finally, um, what I want to show you now is ways that you can get help uh, on your research when you're actually doing it. So here we have um, three ways listed that you can contact a librarian to get help with your research. So um, normally you could also email me directly, um, but uh, while I'm on parental leave, uh, your best bet is probably to use these one of these three services. So if you click on this Ask Us page, it's going to give you some different options, including drop-in, no appointment needed, research help at the reference desk. Um, we have a reference desk at the Hayward location located on the ground floor. Um, so that lower mall level, as you walk in, you'll see big blue sign that says Ask Us ask us above the desk and that service is completely drop-in and you can come with questions about you know everything from what databases to choose what search terms to use how to do your APA citations and things like that um, we have um, evening and weekend hours as well as during the day and you can find out those hours by looking at the reference service hours you can also send an email to um, using this form here with your question and one of the librarians will get back to you as well as if necessary forward your email on to someone including the temporary nursing nursing liaison if they're unable to answer your question 
And then finally, we have 24-7 chat, which is what I really strongly urge students to use um, because if you are struggling to move forward in your search, I'd rather you get help at the time that you need it than send an email and have to wait, you know, 24 to 48 hours or um, wait until the reference desk is open to get a response to it. So it's a really great way of moving forward when you're actually doing the work uh, to get help. And when the library is open, um, your question will be answered by a librarian at Cal State East Bay. And uh, when not, we are in a consortium with other librarians from the United States, Canada, and the UK. Um, so someone can help you with your question um, by clicking on this Access 24-7 chat here. Okay, so hopefully this tutorial has been helpful in showing you ways that you can research your topic for this class. And if not, I urge you to please get in touch with librarians um, using this Ask Us feature um, to email, call, or chat with a librarian to help you um, with your research. So thank you for your time and attention, and I look forward to working with you when I am back from parental leave.